Hello and welcome back to Manifolds. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now, in today's part 14, we will talk about so-called sub-manifolds. As this name suggests, these are manifolds that lie inside a bigger one. For example, if this is a manifold, we could have another one as a subset. And then we would call the subset a sub-manifold. So you see, the idea is not complicated at all. Moreover, now you should see, for a manifold we can use the fact that we have charts. This means such a set U is mapped to Rn. Here, please recall, U and U' prime in Rn are open sets. And now in this picture, if the submanifold has a smaller dimension than the original manifold, then this set should be mapped into a subspace of Rn. So we can visualize this as a straight line in U'. prime. In other words, if we restrict the map here to the submanifold, we get a chart for this smaller manifold. So in this sense, everything fits together and we can go to the definition. So first, what we need is an n-dimensional manifold. Now, for the definition of a submanifold, we don't need a smooth manifold, but because we will deal a lot with smooth manifolds now, we can also put this into the definition. Okay, now this manifold M will be the large manifold here. And now the smaller manifold, the subset, we call M0. And this is a k-dimensional submanifold of M, where k is less or equal than n. So you see, the new notion here is submanifold. And we use this notion when the condition we described above is fulfilled. More precisely, this means that for all points P in our subset M0, we find an open neighborhood around this point, namely a whole chart of the original manifold. So as usual, we call the chart UH, where U is the open set and H is the map. And now the property we want, we have already discussed above, we want something about the image of the subset. And this is what we denote by H with brackets, and inside we have M0 intersected with U. So this set we find here and the image is there. Okay, and now this image should look similar to R to the power K. So this would be our k-dimensional space we see here. However, this one needs to lie in the bigger space Rn. Therefore, we need n components here and we can just fill up the other ones with zeros. So here you see, this is just Rk embedded in the bigger space Rn. Therefore, we need exactly n minus k zeros. Moreover, the whole thing should also lie in U prime, therefore we need the intersection with U prime. So there you see, this is exactly what we want and it captures the idea we have sketched above. More precisely, there in our drawing, this green line here should lie on the axis. Simply because the other components should be zero. And there you should see, this one then is exactly our image. Then in this case, we can call the original chart of M a submanifold chart for M0. So there you should see the difference. This chart is not only defined on M0, but also around it. Indeed, this is the essence of a submanifold. There is something around it. You can leave the submanifold. Moreover, often the surrounding, the original manifold M, is just the ordinary space Rn. However, you should also note that a submanifold is an ordinary manifold itself. Hence, this means it's possible without a problem to forget these surroundings. So by the ordinary definition of a manifold, now we need charts that are only defined on the manifold itself. Hence, we simply transform a submanifold chart to an ordinary chart. 
And indeed, I think a suitable name would be to use tildes above u and h. Now, this is not a problem at all, we can just restrict both things to m0. This means that u tilde should be u intersected with m0. In addition, h tilde is also not so complicated, I can just tell you what it does with the point p of m0. First, we can just use the original map h, so we have h of p, which has, as we know, n minus k zeros involved. In other words, we have a vector with n components where k are important, and then we have n minus k zeros. And then the idea is to forget about the zeros and map this thing into rk. So in other words, this is now simply a projection map. And the outcome is an element of rk. So you see, this is very nice, h tilde maps this set into rk. Okay, and in summary, because we have enough submanifold charts, we also have enough ordinary charts. In other words, M0 is a well-defined manifold. Okay, and now I want to show you a lot of examples for submanifolds, but I think that's a good fit for the next video. And with this, I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye!